good morning. I slept terribly last night, but it is currently 5.15. Got the ponga loaded up, and today is the day. It is 36 degrees out this morning, but Wahoo is on the mind. My fuel tank is it's right in here in the console. We got 38 gallons. Just filled it up to the brim, ready to roll. Oh, we have, uh, have they seen that? <laughs> Got a good speed right now, We're going about 24 knots. Should be out there in about an hour and a half. I'm liking it. Beautiful morning out here. We're all get ready to go. Spear guns or rigs, and all we need is some clear water. Head down. How feel it. <laughs> feeling, feeling bumpy. Feeling good. A little bumpy, but we're good. But we're not slamming. That's the only thing. We're not. Better. We're not slamming. We'll see you in like 30 miles from now. Swells grew a little bit out here, but we're still chomping at it, going about 22, 23. For a while it flattened out and we were going 27, 28. As soon as we hit that offshore wind, the swell picked up. Woo, that was a big one. All right, we have arrived. Water's not looking necessarily blue, but I'm gonna wait for that sun to come up a little bit and see what it looks like. Um, I've actually never been to this spot before, so I'm gonna drive around and look for some structure. We already went over a big school of fish, but I wanna kinda give it a good whirl before I decide where I wanna drift or drop down bait. We have decided we're gonna hop in, put the camera underwater, and it looked all right, so. We're gonna get suited up once we find the area we wanna jump in it and set up a drift and then drop the flasher down and start chumming getting suited up right now water is 72.3 so very very warm a lot warmer than the air temp that's for sure <laughs> what i can tell you though is there's a lot of particles so it's going to limit our business oh, no. like the color oh, let me good, pull around first just very hazy
about 15 minutes and it came off about 30 feet from the boat. Wouldn't even see the Wahoo if it was there right, right now. Like, when that remora was down at the flasher, I looked down and I was like, if that was any other fish, I wouldn't be able to see it. Well, just hopped out of the water, made our first drift, and it's not looking too great. Water is pretty hazy, particle-y, but I just talked to my buddy on the radio. He's at another area about 10 miles away. He's catching some kingfish that he just lost a wahoo. So we might go over there in a little bit, um, but really right now the main uh, issue is the water clarity. We probably wouldn't even be able to see a wahoo if it was, you know, 40 feet in front of us. So. Um, that's what we're dealing with. We're gonna give it another drift here. And if it doesn't work out, we're gonna make a run. Either dive there a little bit or start trolling or deep dropping. We're doing what we can. String up my 100 centimeter Rob Allen and throw it to me. Woo! String up the van, string up the van. Just hold the gun ready. If I see a wahoo, be ready and give it to me. Yeah. Hundreds of rainbow runners. Real. Grab that line. He's barely on, so play him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run. Real soft, I hit him high. Yeah, I got, I got you, bro. Barely giving them pressure. They're so soft. Get the boat. Nice job, Greg. Dude, there's so many down there. I, I had a giant one swim up to me. But then I saw a school come up and there was probably at least 50. All right. Well, we're starting to see some life. That's the first step to attracting wahoos, getting a bunch of bait fish and smaller fish like these rainbow runners. Had a giant one swim up to me initially. Didn't have my, uh, my 100 centimeter real gun. Called Fisher, got my little gun and then the whole school swam in. So at least we got something to eat. We're not skunked. But uh, yeah, we're gonna put him in the ice box, hop back in the water, and either spear another one of these or hopefully spear a wahoo. back in with the dude that rock that freaking gun is amazing it's so light
Yeah. Update, I got out of the water. It's just, you can't see very far. It's super murky. We had one really good drift where we saw all those rainbow runners. Uh, I made a couple dives down to where I saw the, the structure we're diving and I saw some giant barracudas. I don't think the GoPro got it, but um, other than the rainbow runners and barracudas, I didn't see much. It's just, there's so much particulate in the water and it's so hazy. I feel like uh, it's just hard to spot fish. Fish are having a hard time finding us too. But we're gonna drop some baits down, see if we can catch something. We'll see. Big fish. Nope, he's off. Got smoked. How oh, weird. There he is. There we go. Fish on. Oh my goodness, I think I know what that is. <laughs> I think I know what that is. Gosh, he's digging deep. Might have our big bait though. Well, as you guys can tell, as I said, hopped out of the water. I just dropped an eel down, artificial, and we just got tight. He's coming up easy now. Uh-oh, there he's digging. We are using 100 pound mono leader, so hopefully it holds up. So far, so good. Out here fighting a fish in my wetsuit. I see color. That right there is exactly what I suspected it to be. Jack Creval. Come here, dude. I don't know what I want to do with this, this thing. All right, in the boat. Check her out. In the winter time, these Jack Cravel, they come offshore and they school on these uh, cutoff rigs, oil rigs, stuff like that. Out deep in 200 foot of water. In the springtime, they move back in inshore and that's when we get the Jack run. Listen to that noise. You hear that? Yeah. Sounds like a like a pelican or like a like a seagull. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, there's probably thousands of these things down there, just schooling, vortexing the structure. Adios. Down to get murked by a Mako shark. You're marking down deep, 200 foot. Let's see if I can get this lure all the way down to the bottom and escape them jacks. We could catch those jacks all day if we wanted to. All right, I think we hit bottom. Should have dropped a bait down there. There we go. Fish on. Doesn't feel as heavy as that jack. Almost feels like a small red snapper. Uh, who knows? Oh gosh. And that is the feeling of what I think could be a jack of all. Mm. 
jeez. Ah, golly. That is a a freaking telephone pole right there. Come on. Hooked up in the ponga. What do y'all think it is? You know, we catch jacks on the surface and in the spring and Smack in the top. to think they're down there at 260 Smack feet. Yeah, they smack top waters in the spring. In the, in the winter, they're out here deep. As I was saying, and this guy right there was down at 260 feet. A little bit bigger one right there. Yeah. Bigger jack here. All right, Buck. There we go. Talk about a stout hook. He wanted to go. All right, well, I guess we're just gonna fish from here on out. The water just, as I was saying, is not too clear. So we've drifted all morning. It's now almost one o'clock and just couldn't get any, anything good to show up. Two jacks in the boat. We're gonna keep dropping and who knows. Let's see what we can catch. I can only imagine what's down there, dude, in that murk. I know there's a lot of Jack Crevel. But just imagine like the grouper. Yeah. Could be big Kuberas. Yeah. Gosh dang, dude. <laughs> Again. Oh, there he goes. Thank you. <laughs> really didn't want to wrestle another jack. I'm trying to get through them to catch something cooler. Look at that. Twisted it all up. So this is the rig. Just, uh, I think that's like a seven inch pink eel. Hoagie jig head. And then I put on a three ounce slide weight just so it gets down there. Golly. Oh, <laughs> Every drop. Yeah, dude, there's a bunch of them down there. Yeah. Damn it. Mm. Lost it. Yeah. We'll get a new rig on there. Uh, Hopefully he's running from a big Mako. Yes. I'm hoping it's not a jack, but I'm thinking it's a jack. Ooh. Well, I'll come out here, find the water to be dirty, always catch jacks. It's something to do. Oh yeah, look at that thing. It's a good one. Yeah, that is a good one. That's a giant. Look at the girth. Whoa! Jeez, he's pissed. Ugh. Look at that. That right there is a horse Jack Crevel wrestled up from the depths. 265 foot. If you want to fight a fish, come offshore Texas in the wintertime and drop down a bucktail or an eel. And you can catch these all day. It's Hunter's turn. He needs to crank one up here. We're right on the spot right now. He's dropping down the same lure, that eel. Let's see what he can get. Maybe he won't catch a jack. Oh, okay. Big market 80. So much crud in the water that it's 
kind of sketchy diving down in that haze, especially when you know there's 600 pound mako sharks swimming around out here. There we go. How does that feel? Oh, it feels good. <laughs> it's been a long day. Oh, yeah. There we go. Listen to that drag. Golly. 268 feet. Get that line out here. Yeah. I'm drained. <laughs> that fish actually drained me. Oh, I bet. See ya. Woo. Well, it's really calmed down out here. This morning got pretty bumpy, but Ponga took it like a champ. Boat ride out here was, how should I describe our boat ride out here? The boat ate up the swell on the way out here. That's what I would say. It was smooth at first and then I had to slow down. I got up to 28 knots and then I had to slow down to like 20 and then a couple times even to 18 just because the swell was so large and they started to stack up. They weren't spread out like they were earlier. Yeah, I mean overall though, for being how rough it got, boat took it like a champ, plowed the big swells, it got out here in no time. Got out here at 8.30 a.m. Been diving and fishing all day, it's now two o'clock. But the water's just still green. I think we need a few more weeks. It's the end of January right now. So hopefully February, March, it'll clear up and we can get out here and get the water when it's clear blue. Yeah, just didn't happen today, but we got some Jack Cravel. Boat ran like a champ out here. Got to test it out in some fairly swirly seas, so. Overall, wouldn't call it a bust. We did everything right as far as Wahoo. They just, uh, they weren't here, so. With that said, we're gonna get packed up, roll back in, see you guys when we get to the next spot. Being out here in a Ponga is something else, let me tell ya. Oh, he's on, he's on. There we go. Got a fish. There we go. I think it's a red snapper. Oh, dude. Dude, look at that. What is that? It's a scorpion fish, right? Oh my gosh. That thing body. is... Be careful of that. They do have a spine that's got some venom in it. That thing is disgusting. Or is it a dogfish? Yeah, people call them dogfish. Dogfish, dogfish. Yeah. yeah. I've seen one of these before in the canals. Gosh, what do y'all think about that? That is a one gnarly looking fish. <laughs> <laughs> 